If you found this video, listen up. The universe has a message just for you in life's cosmic tapestry. It's not a coincidence. It's a nudge towards a revelation that could change your path. Someone who envies you caught in a video doing this to you. This video is made by your guardian angel, orchestrating a cosmic intervention to shed light on a truth you may not be fully aware of. Imagine someone who secretly envies your successes, achievements, or even your radiant energy inadvertently captured on film. The universe has a way of revealing hidden aspects, and this video is a cosmic sneak peek into the unseen forces at play in your life. Now you might be wondering, how could a video be made by your guardian angel? Well, consider this. The universe operates in mysterious ways, using various channels to communicate with us. Your guardian angel, in this case, has harnessed the energy of the cosmos to manipulate the visual narrative of this footage. It's a celestial collaboration between the divine and the digital, a fusion of the metaphysical and the technological realms. Pause for a moment and type. I claim the message to align yourself with the energies the universe is trying to convey. Your acknowledgement is the first step towards unlocking the insights that await you in the unfolding story of this extraordinary video. As the video unfolds before your eyes, allow yourself to become fully immersed in the experience. Take note of the subtle nuances, the delicate shifts and expression upon the face of the envious character. Notice how each fleeting emotion, every fleeting glance, conveys a deeper truth, a hidden message waiting to be deciphered. Moreover, pay close attention to the cosmic symbolism interwoven throughout the background. Perhaps there are celestial alignments, patterns, or motifs that resonate with you on a profound level. These elements are not mere coincidences, but deliberate orchestrations by the universe, intricately woven into the fabric of the scene. Indeed, every frame of this cosmic cinema is akin to a canvas painted with the colors of the universe itself. Each brushstroke, each hue, carries with it a message tailor-made just for you. It is as though the cosmos has chosen this moment, this medium, to communicate directly with your soul. Furthermore, recognize that this celestial cinematography transcends the realms of mere visual stimulation. While undeniably captivating to the eyes, its true power lies in its ability to serve as a vessel for divine wisdom. Through the medium of film, the universe speaks to you in a language beyond words, reaching deep into the recesses of your being in a manner both unique and unconventional. Therefore, as you watch, allow yourself to surrender to the cosmic currents flowing through each frame. Open your heart and mind to receive the insights and revelations that await. For in this convergence of art and spirituality, you may find the keys to unlocking a deeper understanding of yourself and your place within the vast cosmos. Let us venture deeper into the profound layers of meaning within this celestial cinema. The envy depicted in the video is not intended to evoke feelings of fear or paranoia within you. Instead, it serves as a beacon guiding you towards a profound realization of the inherent power that resides within your being. Consider for a moment the essence of envy itself. It is often a response to the brilliance and success that emanate from your very being. Your light, your achievements, and your positive energy have the capacity to illuminate the world around you, attracting the attention, admiration, and yes, sometimes even the envy of others. But rather than seeing envy as a negative force, view it as a confirmation of your own strength and resilience. Indeed, the fact that your light shines brightly enough to elicit envy is a testament to the magnificence of your spirit. It is a reminder that you possess a unique power, a spark of divinity that sets you apart from the rest. This video serves as a cosmic mirror, reflecting back to you the radiance of your own soul. Embrace this reflection wholeheartedly, for it speaks to the need to embrace your uniqueness unapologetically. Type, I embrace my uniqueness to affirm your commitment to being authentically you, irrespective of external influences. This declaration is not merely a statement, but a cosmic contract, a sacred vow to navigate your journey with authenticity and grace. By embracing your uniqueness, you align yourself with the divine flow of the universe. You honor the truth of who you are and invite greater harmony and alignment into your life. In doing so, you pave the way for deeper connections, richer experiences, and a more profound sense of fulfillment. So, as you continue to journey through the cosmic tapestry of existence, remember the power that lies within you. Embrace your uniqueness, for it is the key to unlocking the boundless potential that resides within your soul. 
Trust in the wisdom of the universe and let your light shine brightly for all the world to see. As the video unfolds, pay attention to the cosmic breadcrumbs sprinkled throughout. The universe often communicates through symbols, signs, and synchronicities. Whether it's a specific color, a recurring number, or a subtle celestial alignment in the background, these are the cosmic clues guiding you toward a deeper understanding of your path. Type. I am open to cosmic guidance to signal your receptivity to the subtle whispers of the universe. Your openness creates a harmonious flow, allowing the cosmic energies to work in tandem with your intentions and aspirations. The envious character in the video, unknowingly serving as a cosmic messenger, highlights the importance of discernment in your interactions and relationships. It's a call to surround yourself with positivity, support, and genuine connections that uplift and inspire. Your journey is too precious to be hindered by those who project negativity. Type, I attract positive energy to align your vibrational frequency with positivity and repel any energies that don't serve your highest good. This affirmation acts as a shield, allowing only love, light, and positivity to permeate your life. Now as the video nears its conclusion, reflect on the emotions and thoughts it has stirred within you. The universe, through this cosmic cinema, has stirred the waters of your soul, awakening dormant insights and revelations. This experience is not just a video, but a transformative journey orchestrated by the cosmic conductor to elevate your consciousness. Type. I am open to transformation to signal your willingness to embrace the changes and growth that the universe is guiding you towards. This affirmation is your ticket to a higher plane of understanding and self-discovery. In conclusion, if you have found this video today, know that the universe has conspired to deliver a message exclusively for you. Someone's envy caught on film is not a cause for concern, but an opportunity for introspection and empowerment. Your guardian angel, with celestial finesse, has crafted this cosmic cinema to awaken, inspire, and guide you on your journey. Type, I am grateful for the cosmic message to express your gratitude to the universe for its guidance and wisdom. Your gratitude completes the cosmic loop, creating a harmonious exchange of energy between you and the vast cosmic tapestry that surrounds you. As you move forward, carry the lessons of this cosmic video in your heart, knowing that the universe is always conspiring in your favor. In the aftermath of this cosmic revelation, you may find yourself in a state of heightened awareness, attuned to the subtle energies that dance through the universe. This heightened awareness is a gift, a byproduct of your willingness to engage with the cosmic forces at play. Now as you embark on the next chapter of your journey, let this newfound awareness be your compass. Type, I trust the cosmic guidance to affirm your trust in the unseen forces that guide and protect you. Trust is the bridge that connects you to the cosmic currents, allowing the universe to steer you toward the opportunities and experiences that align with your highest purpose. As you navigate the tapestry of your life, consider the envious character in the video not as an antagonist, but as a reflection of the challenges and tests that come with growth. Embrace these challenges as opportunities for strength, resilience, and personal evolution. The universe, in its infinite wisdom, often places hurdles on our path to catalyze transformation and elevate our consciousness. Type, I welcome growth and transformation to signify your openness to the dynamic process of evolution. This affirmation is your commitment to flow with the cosmic currents, adapting and growing in harmony with the ever-changing landscape of your journey. Now let's explore the ripple effect of this cosmic video on your relationships and connections. The energy you emit, as showcased in the video, can either attract or repel certain energies around you. Be mindful of the vibrations you send into the universe as they shape the nature of your interactions and the quality of relationships you cultivate. Type, I am intentional with my energy to declare your conscious effort to radiate positivity and intentionality in your interactions. This intention becomes a beacon drawing like-minded souls into your orbit and creating a harmonious energetic exchange. Consider the cosmic video as a reminder to celebrate your successes and achievements without fear of judgment. Your victories are a testament to your hard work, dedication, and the unique gifts you bring to the world. Don't dim your light to appease others. Instead, let it shine brightly, inspiring those around you. Type, I celebrate my victories unapologetically to declare your commitment to acknowledging and celebrating your achievements, big or small. 
This affirmation is a declaration of self-love and self-appreciation, inviting more abundance and success into your life. As you embark on the continuation of your journey, carry the cosmic wisdom with you. The universe has spoken through this video, and you have listened with an open heart. Trust in the divine orchestration of your life and know that the cosmic forces are conspiring to lead you to your highest potential. Type, I am aligned with my highest potential to declare your alignment with the cosmic plan for your life. This affirmation solidifies your connection with the universe, ensuring that you move forward with purpose, grace, and an unwavering belief in the magic that surrounds you. As we conclude, if you've come across this article today, it's a sign of the universe's enchanting connection with you. Embrace the cosmic messages, seize the wisdom, and proceed on your journey with the understanding that you are a valued and essential participant in the grand cosmic symphony of life. If you believe in the support of a higher power, let this resonate within you. Imagine embarking on a journey through an unknown landscape, where each step forward is an act of faith and each breath a whisper of hope. This journey is not marked by the visible challenges of towering peaks or vast oceans, but by the internal battles that we face. It is marked by the moments of doubt, fear, and uncertainty that cloud our path. Yet, it is in these very moments that a profound truth emerges, a beacon of hope in the darkness. God is for us. He is the compass that guides us, the light that illuminates our path, and the strength that carries us forward. Today, we will delve into understanding how to find strength in the Lord and be assured that He will never fail us. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. In Isaiah 41 verse 10, we find a promise that anchors us. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This verse is not just a comforting thought. It is the very essence of God's promise to us, an assurance that no matter the journey, we are never alone. Together, we will discover the means to navigate life's uncertainties, fortified by the knowledge that God's presence is ever with us. Now, as we journey through life, we often encounter terrains that test our faith and resolve. These moments filled with uncertainty can make us feel as though we are journeying through a thick fog, each step uncertain, each decision filled with the potential for misstep or the risk of error. Yet, it is precisely in these moments of vulnerability that God's promise to be with us, to guide and strengthen us, becomes most tangible. Life's journey is unpredictable. We face challenges that seem insurmountable, problems that appear unsolvable, and questions that seem unanswerable. It is in these times when the fog of uncertainty surrounds us that the weight of our own weakness becomes most apparent. However, it is also in these times that the strength of God's presence shines brightest. The story of David and Goliath is told in 1 Samuel 17 verse 45 serves as a powerful reminder of this truth. Facing a giant, David declared, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. David's confidence did not stem from his own capabilities, but from his faith in God's power. Like David, we are called to face the giants in our lives not with fear, but with the assurance that God is with us, providing the strength we need to overcome. This journey through life, with its highs and lows, is not a journey taken alone, but a shared journey with God as our constant companion. His promise to be with us is not just a reassurance of presence, but an assurance of active support. In moments of weakness, He provides strength. In times of doubt, He offers faith. And in periods of turmoil, He grants peace. Philippians 4 verse 13 captures this beautifully. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This verse is a testament to the transformative power of God's strength in our lives, a reminder that regardless of the challenges we face, we possess the capability to overcome them, not through our own might, but through the strength granted to us by Christ. As we navigate the uncertainties of life, let us remember that we do not walk alone. The fog of doubt and fear may at times cloud our path, but the light of God's presence is a constant guide. His word the compass that directs us, and His strength the foundation upon which we can build our resilience. 
In embracing this journey, let us draw near to God, seeking His guidance and strength in every step. Let us trust in His promise to be with us, to strengthen us, and to uphold us. And as we do so, let us find comfort in the knowledge that no matter the challenges we encounter, we are journeying with the Almighty God who never fails us. Let us now explore the practical implications of God's favor and guidance and how His presence empowers us to face life's adversities with strength and confidence. As we journey through life, it often feels as though we are navigating a vast, uncharted wilderness. The terrain is rough, the paths are unmarked, and the destination seems distant. It's in these moments of uncertainty and struggle that the presence of a guide can make all the difference, a guide who not only knows the way, but also walks with us, offering support, encouragement, and direction. This guide is God, and His promise to be with us is a testament to His unfailing support. Consider the words of Romans 8 verse 31, which boldly declares, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? This verse is not just a rhetorical question, it's a declaration of divine support. It reassures us that with God on our side, the challenges and adversaries that we face lose their power over us. The realization that the Creator of the heavens and the earth is for us should fill our hearts with courage and our steps with confidence. This simple truth changes everything. It means that no matter what we face, we are not overwhelmed because our God is bigger than our struggles. Knowing this, we can face anything, understanding that with God, we are always in a position of strength. This reassurance helps us stand firm no matter what comes our way, confident that we are never alone or without help. Now, this assurance of God being for us is not meant to suggest that our journey will be without challenge. Rather, it is a reminder that when we encounter obstacles, we do not face them alone. The battles we fight are fought with God's strength, and the victories we claim are won through His might. Just as a seasoned guide leads a traveler through treacherous terrain, God guides us, offering His wisdom and strength to navigate the complexities of life. The practical application of this truth is seen in our daily lives. When we face decisions that leave us perplexed, God's wisdom is available to guide us. When we encounter situations that threaten to overwhelm us, His strength is sufficient to sustain us. And when we feel isolated or abandoned, His presence is a constant companion, offering comfort and reassurance. But how do we tap into this divine support? The key lies in our relationship with God. Just as communication is vital between a traveler and their guide, so too is our communication with God. Prayer becomes the medium through which we express our fears, our hopes, and our needs. And it is through the study of His Word and the leading of the Holy Spirit that we gain insight into His character, His promises, and His will for our lives. Furthermore, the journey of faith is one that requires trust. Trust in God's timing, trust in His promises, and trust in His character. It is a trust that is built over time through experiences that testify to God's faithfulness and goodness. Each challenge overcome and each need met serves as a milestone in our journey of faith, reinforcing our trust in God and His provision. This journey, though personal, is also shared. As believers, we are part of a community of faith, a family of fellow travelers who share the road with us. This community offers support, encouragement, and accountability reminding us that we are not alone in our journey. It is within this community that we find opportunities to share our stories, to celebrate our victories, and to encourage one another in times of struggle. As we reflect on the assurance that God is for us, let us also consider the response that it calls for from each of us, a response of faith, of trust, and of obedience. The faith that God is who He says He is, the trust that He will do what He has promised, and the obedience to His guidance and commandments. It is through this response that we experience the fullness of God's support and guidance in our lives. Therefore, let us carry with us the assurance that God is indeed for us. Let this truth anchor us in times of uncertainty, strengthen us in times of weakness, and guide us in times of decision. For with God on our side, we have nothing to fear. We really don't. Remember, the devil is a liar. Let us move forward in faith, confident in the knowledge that no matter what we face, we do not face it alone. 
God is with us, he is for us, and through him, we are more than conquerors. We will now turn our attention to the transformative power of embracing God's strength in our lives. Throughout the course of our daily lives, we encounter various forms of adversity, moments that test our faith, challenge our resolve, and sometimes threaten to overwhelm us. It's in these moments that the true depth of our reliance on God is revealed. The realization that our strength alone is insufficient is not a cause for despair, but an invitation to lean fully into the strength that God provides. This reliance on divine strength is not a sign of weakness, but a testament to our understanding of where our true power lies. The Apostle Paul's words in 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 to 10 serve as a profound reminder of this truth. He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This seemingly contradictory statement highlights the core of Christian strength. We do not take pride in our own power, but in God's. Our weaknesses and obstacles turn into opportunities for God's strength and grace to shine through in our lives. Embracing God's strength requires a shift in perspective. It means viewing our challenges through the lens of faith, recognizing that with God, no obstacle is insurmountable. This shift doesn't negate the reality of our struggles, but places them in the context of God's greater power and purpose. Again, it's an acknowledgement that our journey through life is not undertaken alone, but in collaboration with the divine, where our efforts are enhanced and completed by God's power. This divine partnership empowers us to approach life's battles with a different mindset. Instead of being overwhelmed by the magnitude of our challenges, we are encouraged by the knowledge that God is with us, fighting for us, and through Him, we have victory. And remember, this doesn't mean we won't face difficulties or that our faith won't be tested. What it does mean is that in the midst of our battles, we have a source of strength that is inexhaustible, a well of courage that never runs dry, and a promise of victory that is certain. Living in the strength that God provides also has a profound impact on how we relate to others. It compels us to move beyond our limitations and to act with compassion, courage, and conviction. As we experience God's strength in our lives, we are motivated to be agents of His love and grace in the world around us. Our battles, once seen as personal struggles, become opportunities to testify to God's power and to offer hope to others facing similar challenges. My friends, let us also consider that our God is unchanging and unfailing in nature. His steadfast love and faithfulness are our constant companions through every season. To truly grasp that He is for us, we must also understand that He will never fail us. And in so doing, we must understand His character. God is not like humans who might make promises only to break them when circumstances change. God's promises are as unshakable as His very nature. When He commits to being by our side, He means it for eternity. This assurance enables us to be confident that He is for us and face the uncertainties and challenges of life with a calm heart and a steady spirit, knowing that regardless of what we encounter, God's support remains unwavering. Living with the knowledge that God will never fail us transforms the way we approach every aspect of our existence. It allows us to take bold steps of faith, to dream big, and to pursue our God-given destinies without fear of abandonment. When we stumble or fall, as we inevitably will, this promise offers us the strength to rise again, dust ourselves off, and continue the journey. It's a reminder that our failures do not define us in the eyes of God. Rather, His unfailing presence is a testament to our inherent worth and potential in Him. Therefore, let us carry forward the assurance that no matter the trials we face or the mountains we must climb, God's presence and support are guaranteed. God is for us. He is with us every step of the way. His promise is as reliable as the dawn. In every moment of doubt, every season of struggle, and every celebration of victory, may we remember this. Our God will never fail us. My friends, let's carry with us the empowering truth that resonates at the heart of our message. God is for you. So be strong in the Lord 
he will never fail you. In every step of your journey through the highs and the lows, remember that you are never walking alone. The Lord stands beside you as a steadfast guide, offering his strength, his love, and his unwavering support. Let this knowledge fill you with courage and hope. When you face the mountains of life, look to him, draw from his infinite strength, and move forward with confidence. For in the Lord, you have an unshakable support, and with him, you will navigate the challenges of life not just with endurance, but with victory. Be strong in the Lord, my dear friends, for he will never fail you. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I come before you with a heart full of thanksgiving and praise. I acknowledge your greatness, your majesty, and your sovereignty over all creation. You are the Rock of Ages, the King of Kings, and Lord of Lords, worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. Your power is unmatched, your wisdom and love are boundless. I worship you, Lord, for who you are, my fortress, my deliverer, and my strength. Lord, I give you thanks for the gift of life and for the countless blessings you have poured into my life and the lives of my loved ones. I am grateful for your mercies that are new every morning and for your grace that sustains me. Thank you for your unwavering presence and for walking beside me through every trial and triumph. Lord, I ask for your forgiveness for my sins, for the times I have fallen short of your glory. I also choose to forgive those who have wronged me, releasing any bitterness or resentment in my heart. Cleanse me, Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Father, I stand on your promises, drawing strength from your word. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I rebuke the spirit of fear, doubt, and discouragement, binding them in the name of Jesus, and I claim faith, hope, and love in my life. Lord, empower me to be strong in you and in the power of your might. Fill me with the wisdom, courage, and strength to face life's battles, knowing that with you, victory is assured. I decree healing over my body, mind, and spirit in the name of Jesus. I pray for your healing touch upon my loved ones. Mighty God, I stand against every attack of the enemy, praying against sickness, depression, financial lack, and strife. I claim protection over myself and my loved ones, asking you to shield us from all harm and to guide our steps. Bless us, Father, with your favor and peace, and may your healing hand touch every area of our lives that needs restoration. Lord, as I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement, standing united in faith as we pray for each other. Strengthen us, Lord, to overcome every challenge with grace and to walk in your ways. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, guiding us into all truth and empowering us to live lives that honor you. Bless us, Lord, with your presence. May we experience your profound peace, joy, and love in abundance. Protect us from the snares of the enemy and let your hand be upon us for good. We declare your lordship over our lives, claiming victory over every battle, healing for every wound and sickness, and provision for every need. Let your will be done in our lives and in the lives of my loved ones, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God will uproot every evil thing in your life. Imagine yourself standing at the edge of a beautiful, lush forest, the fresh scent of pine in the air, the soft rustle of leaves underfoot. From afar, it looks perfect, serene, full of life. Yet, as you step closer and look more carefully, you notice something. The forest is filled with weeds and thorns, choking the life out of the beautiful flowers and plants, distorting the view and the full potential of its beauty. Our lives can sometimes look like this forest. On the surface, it may seem perfect and full of life, yet upon closer examination, we find weeds. Those evil things are forces entangling and choking our spiritual growth, inhibiting us from realizing our full potential in Christ. Today, I will help you to identify, confront, and uproot these forces so that you can flourish as God intended. 
The starting point of this journey is to recognize the existence of these forces. Just as one needs to recognize a weed before it can be uprooted from a beautiful garden, recognizing the existence of evil forces is the essential first step in our spiritual journey to freedom. These forces can come in various shapes and sizes, sometimes lurking in the shadows of our lives, almost invisible. Other times, these forces may be standing boldly in our paths, blatantly opposing us. Let's look at a story in 2 Kings 5. Gehazi was the servant of the prophet Elisha and had witnessed incredible miracles. Yet, when faced with the prospect of wealth and material possessions, Gehazi allowed greed, an evil force, to enter his heart. He lied to Naaman and Elisha to gain silver and garments he had not earned. His inability to recognize and resist this destructive force led to a grave consequence. He was struck with leprosy. This story is a vivid reminder that these evil forces can sometimes be found within us, hidden in our hearts, subtly influencing our own thoughts, actions, and choices. They can be attitudes or behaviors contrary to the fruits of the Spirit, such as greed, pride, anger, envy, bitterness, or unforgiveness. Recognizing these forces requires sincere self-examination. We need to hold a mirror to our hearts and ask ourselves, what attitudes and behaviors are hindering my walk with God? Or what aspects of my character do not reflect Christ's nature? The answers to these questions are clues to evil forces at work in our lives. It's not only the forces within that we need to recognize. The Bible reminds us in 1 Peter 5 verse 8 that the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. These external evil forces can present themselves as harmful relationships, negative environments, or societal pressures that pull us away from our commitment to God. The story of King Ahab and Queen Jezebel in 1 Kings 21 illustrates how external evil forces can affect our lives. Ahab allowed Jezebel, his wife, to lead him astray from God's commands, even to the point of murdering an innocent man, Naboth, just to acquire his vineyard. He failed to recognize the negative influence Jezebel had over him, and this led to their downfall. But fear not, for God's word serves as a powerful spotlight, shedding light on the hidden corners of our lives where these forces may lurk. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. The word helps us discern right from wrong, good from evil, allowing us to identify these evil forces. So, recognizing the evil forces both within and around us is a crucial part of uprooting every evil thing affecting our lives. It requires honesty, humility, and a deep reliance on God's word. But with God's help, we can not only recognize these forces but also overcome them. As 1 John 4 verse 4 reassures us, the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Now, where do these weeds or these evil forces come from? Every action has a cause. Every effect has a source. The evil forces at work in our lives causing strife, confusion, and discord also have a source, an origin from which they come. We're reminded of this in the book of Job, chapter 1. Job, a man described as upright and blameless, suddenly found his life in turmoil. He lost his wealth, his children, and his health in quick succession. While it may appear on the surface that these calamities were mere accidents or unfortunate coincidences, we know from the narrative that the source of Job's trials was none other than Satan himself. Satan, the enemy of our souls, is often the source of the evil forces we face. This isn't meant to scare us, but to bring awareness. Ephesians 6 verse 12 tells us that our struggle isn't against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of evil. Just as a weed's roots lie beneath the soil, hidden from view but firmly anchored, these forces often operate behind the scenes, causing havoc in our lives. However, there's an important distinction to remember. While Satan may be the source of these evil forces, we also have a role to play. Let's reflect on the story of King Saul as an example. In 1 Samuel 15, Saul was commanded by God to destroy the Amalekites completely. However, he disobeyed sparing the king and keeping some of the spoils of war. This act of disobedience opened a door for an evil force to operate in Saul's life. 1 Samuel 16 verse 14 tells us that an evil spirit from God tormented Saul. It wasn't that God created this evil spirit, but rather that Saul's disobedience removed God's protective hand, allowing the evil force to torment him. 
This highlights a key truth about this source of evil forces. While they may originate from the enemy, our actions and choices can invite or resist these forces. Disobedience, compromise, and unrighteousness can create an environment where these forces can thrive. Understanding the source of evil forces helps us to fight them effectively. It reveals the need for obedience to God's commands, a constant reliance on His grace, and a resolute stand against the wiles of the enemy. And the most encouraging part is we are not left defenseless against these forces. James 4 verse 7 promises, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Despite the power of the source of these evil forces, the one who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. Therefore, as we recognize the source of these evil forces, let's not despair or fear. Instead, let's submit to God, uphold His commands, and trust in His power to overcome and uproot these forces from our lives. As we move forward in this journey, we need to be armed and ready, just like a hiker equipping themselves before an expedition. We need to equip ourselves with the armor of God. The battle against evil forces isn't fought with physical weapons. No sword, shield, or arrow crafted by human hands can stand against the spiritual forces we contend with. However, we have been equipped with a divine armor, tailored by the Creator of the universe Himself. This is the armor of God. This idea isn't foreign to the scriptures. Take the story of King David as a young boy preparing to fight Goliath, the giant who had defied the armies of the living God. In 1 Samuel 17, King Saul tried to clothe David in his own armor but David couldn't move comfortably in it. Instead, he chose to face the giant with just his sling and five smooth stones. Why? Because David knew his real protection came from God. His reliance on God's power was his true armor. The armor of God is beautifully described in Ephesians 6 verses 13 to 17. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Each piece of this divine armor serves a distinct purpose. The belt of truth combats the lies of the enemy, the breastplate of righteousness protects our hearts from accusations and guilt. The readiness of the gospel of peace stabilizes us amidst the chaos of battle. The shield of faith deflects the fiery darts of doubt, fear, and worry. The helmet of salvation guards our minds from thoughts that lead to sin and despair. The sword of the Spirit, God's Word, allows us to counterattack, cutting through deceptions and bringing to light the enemy's schemes. We might not be able to see this armor, but its power is real and tangible. In our journey to uproot every evil thing or force affecting our lives, the armor of God is essential. We must consciously choose to put it on each day, trusting in the protection and power it provides. And as we stand firm in this divine armor, we'll find ourselves more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, able to resist the schemes of the enemy and uproot every trace of evil in our lives. Next, we need to tap into the power of prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting are two spiritual disciplines that have been observed throughout the ages, serving as powerful tools in our fight against evil forces. Though they are different, they often go hand in hand, each one enhancing the power of the other. In the book of Esther, we encounter a compelling example of the power of prayer and fasting. The Jews in Persia were facing a grave threat of annihilation due to the schemes of Haman, an evil force in their midst. Upon learning of this plot, Queen Esther called for all the Jews to fast and pray for three days, while she did the same before approaching the king. This was a dangerous move, but the risk was necessary to save her people. Esther 4 verse 16 records her resolution, Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa, and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. After this period of fasting and prayer, Esther found favor in the sight of the king, and the Jews were saved from destruction. This story reveals the power of prayer and fasting in uprooting the evil forces at work in our lives. It can bring about divine intervention, 
shifts in situations, and breaks strongholds that human effort alone cannot. Prayer is our communication with God. It's our way of bringing our needs, concerns, fears, and hopes to Him. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17 encourages us to pray without ceasing, emphasizing the importance of constant communication with God. Fasting, on the other hand, is a voluntary act of refraining from food or other activities as a physical expression of our spiritual hunger and desperation. It shows God that we are willing to sacrifice our physical needs and wants for spiritual growth and breakthrough. Daniel, another biblical figure, understood the power of prayer and fasting. In Daniel 9, he fasted, prayed, and confessed sins on behalf of his people, seeking God's mercy and intervention. God responded by sending the angel Gabriel with a message of hope and promise for the future. The Apostle James, in James 5 verse 16, tells us that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. When paired with fasting, this power is amplified. Fasting helps us to humble ourselves, focus on God, and heighten our spiritual awareness, making our prayers even more effective. As we face evil forces in our lives, let's remember the power that lies in prayer and fasting. They're not just religious rituals, they're spiritual weapons that can help us uproot the evil affecting us. As we devote ourselves to prayer and fasting, we can expect God to move powerfully on our behalf, bringing deliverance, breaking chains, and leading us into the abundant life that He has promised us. Next, we need the Word of God on our journey. In our quest to uproot every evil force that affects our lives, we must not overlook the most potent weapon we possess, the Word of God. It's more than just a collection of historical narratives, poetic expressions, or moral guidelines. The Word of God is living, active, and powerful. Consider the account in Joshua 1. As Joshua took over leadership after Moses' death, he faced the daunting task of leading the Israelites into the Promised Land, a land occupied by formidable foes. But God, in His infinite wisdom, did not hand Joshua a physical weapon. Instead, He handed him the Book of the Law, His Word. God told Joshua in Joshua 1 verse 8 to keep this Book of the Law always on his lips, to meditate on it day and night so that he may be careful to do everything written in it. Then he would be prosperous and successful. This wasn't an ordinary book. It was a powerful weapon for success and victory. The Word of God, as our weapon, serves two primary functions, defense and offense. Defensively, it guards our hearts and minds, acting as a shield against the lies and deceptions of the enemy. When evil forces whisper words of doubt, fear, guilt, or inadequacy, we can counteract those whispers with the promises and truths found in God's Word. Offensively, the Word of God serves as a sword. Ephesians 6 verse 17 depicts the Word of God as the sword of the Spirit, our primary offensive weapon in spiritual battles. It's the tool we use to counterattack, to take ground, and to advance against the forces of evil. A lesser-known story in the Bible that highlights the power of God's Word is found in 2 Kings 22. King Josiah, after coming across the Book of the Law, initiated a nationwide reform based on God's Word. He removed idols, eliminated false priests, and restored true worship, effectively uprooting the evils that had infiltrated the land. The key to this transformation was the Word of God. In the face of evil forces, the Word of God is our sure defense and our potent offense. It equips us to recognize lies, stand firm in truth, and boldly advance against any force that stands against us. It's our guidebook for living, our comfort in distress, our hope in despair, and our weapon in battle. To effectively wield this weapon, we must be immersed in it, reading it, meditating on it, memorizing it, and applying it in our lives. As we become more grounded in the language of God, we become better at recognizing the enemy's schemes and more effective in fighting them. The Word of God is the living, breathing voice of God, a voice that breaks chains, pulls down strongholds, and uproots every evil force. As Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, For the Word of God is alive and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Armed with this weapon, we can confidently confront and conquer every evil force affecting our lives. In order to ensure that we are not allowing any weed to grow back, we need to live a life of righteousness. Any sin in our life can act as a seed from which these evil forces can grow back. 
Righteous living ensures that no such seed finds space in our life, thereby protecting us from these forces. Living righteously is, therefore, a crucial element in uprooting every evil thing or force affecting our lives. It's about aligning our thoughts, words, and actions with God's standards of holiness and ideousness. But how can we, as imperfect human beings, live righteously? The Bible provides the answer in numerous examples for us. One such example can be found in the life of Daniel. Living as a captive in Babylon, Daniel found himself in a culture that was contrary to his faith. The Babylonians worshipped different gods, ate food that was considered unclean by Jewish standards, and followed practices that were in direct conflict with God's commands. Yet Daniel stood firm in his faith to live righteously. In Daniel 1 verse 8, it says, But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Despite the pressures and potential consequences, Daniel chose to honor God above pleasing men. As a result, Daniel experienced God's favor and protection. When he was thrown into the lion's den for praying to God despite the king's decree, God shut the mouths of the lions and preserved his life. Daniel's commitment to live righteously amidst adversity led to the manifestation of God's power and glory. Living righteously isn't always easy, but it is always rewarding. It provides a clear conscience, inner peace, divine protection, and favor. The Bible encourages us in Galatians 6 verse 9, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Righteous living involves a commitment to honesty, integrity, kindness, and love. But it goes beyond just behaving ethically. It is about surrendering our lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us and transform us from within. Titus 2 verses 12 to 13 instructs us. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we live righteously, we create an atmosphere that is hostile to evil forces. Ephesians 4 verse 27 tells us that sin gives the enemy a foothold in our lives, but righteousness slams the door shut, denying him any opportunity. The door in his face, it uproots the hidden things that could potentially harm us and positions us to experience the fullness of God's blessings. So let's be inspired by the likes of Daniel, who despite being in an environment that promoted ungodliness, chose to live a life of righteousness. It's a personal decision we all have to make, but it's a decision that carries profound implications. Living righteously not only uproots the evil in our lives, but also establishes a foundation for abundant and eternal life. Now, much like a seasoned explorer who consistently checks their route to ensure they're not lost, another thing we need to do is to constantly examine our spiritual lives. Just as we regularly check our physical health, it's equally crucial to consistently check our spiritual health. This checkup involves examining our lives to identify and address any spiritual deficiencies or ailments that may be affecting our relationship with God. The Bible emphasizes the importance of this self-examination. In 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5, Paul instructs us to examine ourselves to see whether we are in the faith. He says, test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. This process involves examining our thoughts, words, actions, and motives against the standard of God's word. One individual who serves as an example of this is King David. Despite being a man after God's own heart, David was not without fault. He committed grave sins, including adultery and murder. However, when the prophet Nathan confronted him about his sins in 2 Samuel 12, David didn't react defensively. He acknowledged his wrongdoing, repented sincerely, and sought God's forgiveness. David's prayer of repentance in Psalm 51 displays a heart that understands the need for a spiritual checkup. In verse 10, David prays, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. This prayer not only reflects David's remorse over his past actions, but also his desire for inward renewal and righteousness. But a spiritual checkup is not only for times when we blatantly sinned. It's a practice we should engage in regularly. We need to constantly evaluate if we're growing in our faith, bearing the fruits of the Spirit, 
walking in obedience to God's commands, and living a life of love and service to others. It involves asking tough questions and being ready to make necessary changes. The story of the church in Ephesus in Revelation 2 verses 1 to 7 offers insight into this. Jesus commended them for their perseverance, hard work, and refusal to tolerate wickedness. However, he also pointed out that they had forsaken their first love. They had lost the passion they initially had for Christ and his works. They were diligent in their works, but their hearts were not right. The Ephesians were called to remember their former state, repent, and do the things they did at first. This call to self-examination was an invitation to perform a spiritual checkup, recognize where they had gone wrong, and return to their original passion and love for Christ. A consistent spiritual checkup helps us identify the weeds we need to uproot and the seeds we need to sow. It keeps our spiritual life healthy and our walk with God on track. It's an opportunity to receive God's grace for our shortcomings and His wisdom for our growth. Remember, this checkup is not to bring condemnation, but to bring conviction that leads to change. Romans 8 verse 1 assures us, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us embrace this practice with open hearts and the assurance of God's love and grace. Regular self-examination and repentance ensure that we are aligned with God's will and no evil force is finding its way back into our lives. Now, even with all this preparation, there will be moments when we directly encounter these forces. In such moments, we're called to resist. James 4 verse 7 offers us a potent strategy to confront these forces. Submit yourselves, then, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Resisting the devil is an active stance. It involves standing firm against his schemes and rejecting his lies. To resist, we must be aware of his strategies and counter them with God's truth. In the Old Testament, the prophet Nehemiah provides us with an example of resisting opposition. When tasked with rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, he faced opposition from Sambalat and Tobiah, who attempted to discourage the Israelites and halt their work. They ridiculed, plotted, and threatened, trying to instill fear and doubt in Nehemiah and his workers. But how did Nehemiah resist? Nehemiah 4 verse 14 records his response. Don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, who is great and awesome, and fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. Nehemiah countered their lies with the truth of God's greatness. He kept his focus on God's mission and encouraged the people to do the same. Nehemiah also resisted by strengthening the defenses as seen in Nehemiah 4 verses 16 to 18 and by praying to God for protection. He did not ignore the threats, but neither did he let them deter him from his mission. Resisting the devil involves a similar strategy. We need to recognize his lies, counter them with God's truth, strengthen our spiritual defenses, and persist in prayer. We must remain steadfast in our faith, rooted in God's word, and committed to our mission. In Matthew 4 verses 1 to 11, another illustration can be found in the life of Jesus himself. In the wilderness, Jesus was tempted by the devil, but each time the devil proposed a temptation, Jesus countered it with scripture. He resisted the devil by speaking the truth of God's word, demonstrating the power of the word as a weapon against evil forces. This approach still applies to us today. When the enemy attempts to sow seeds of fear, doubt, insecurity, or temptation in our lives, we resist by countering those lies with God's truths. We remind ourselves of who God is and who we are in Him. We declare His promises and stand firm in His truth. To resist the devil is to stand firm against his schemes, armed with the truth of God's word, covered in prayer, and steadfast in faith. It is to submit to God, align our lives with His will, and stay committed to His purposes. As we do this, we can trust in the promise that the devil will flee from us. Our God is greater, our cause is righteous, and our victory is assured. Next, let's not forget that this uprooting journey is not one we need to undertake alone. We need Christian fellowship. This is not just about a social gathering. Christian fellowship is a vital part of our spiritual life, a platform for mutual encouragement, prayer, learning, and growth in faith. Through fellowship, we draw strength from one another and collectively resist the forces that seek to pull us away from God. When we fellowship with other believers, we create an environment that fosters spiritual growth and resilience. We can share our struggles, learn from each other's experiences, 
pray for each other and support each other in our journey. This unity can be a source of strength, especially when we face trials or temptations. Paul's letter to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11 echoes this. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. So, through fellowship, we can uplift each other and stand together in faith. In the story of Moses, Aaron, and her during the battle against the Amalekites in Exodus 17 verses 8 to 16, we see a demonstration of the power of fellowship. As long as Moses held up his hands, Israel prevailed. But when he let his hands down, Amalek prevailed. When Moses grew tired, Aaron and her held his hands up, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset and Joshua overcame the Amalekite army. This story illustrates how fellowship can help us in our spiritual battles. Like Aaron and her, we can support each other, pray for each other, and help keep each other focused on God. We are reminded in Ecclesiastes 4 verse 12, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Our shared faith, collective prayer, and mutual encouragement make us stronger and harder to defeat. So remember, we're not just aimlessly wandering in the forest. We're on a mission to clear it of the weeds, the evil forces. We are equipped, we are prepared, and we are not alone. In Christ, we have the victory, and through Him, we can uproot every evil thing or force affecting our lives. Also, we have reason to be hopeful and courageous in the face of these destructive forces. We have a potent defense, the power of the cross. Jesus, through his death and resurrection, has triumphed over all powers of darkness. This victory is not just for him, but is also for us. We share in this victory as believers. Our position in Christ gives us authority over these forces. For it is written in Luke 10 verse 19, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Now, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Dear Heavenly Father, today, I come before you in the quietness of my soul, acknowledging your sovereignty and grace. Lord, I ask for your forgiveness, even as I forgive those who come against me. In the name of Jesus, I stand against every evil force that seeks to attack my life. I declare that they have no power over me or my loved ones because we belong to God. Lord, I command every seed of discord, every root of bitterness, every trace of deceit to be uprooted from my life right now. I declare that my heart, mind, and soul are under your rule and authority, and I am not subject to any evil power. I turn my eyes to you, Father, acknowledging that you are the source of my strength and my deliverance. In the name of Jesus, I reject the lies of the enemy, the whispers of failure, fear, and doubt. I stand firm on the truth that I am loved, redeemed, and empowered by you. O Lord, you have given me the power of your cross and the symbol of your victory over sin and death. I embrace this power and declare in the name of Jesus that every chain holding me back is shattered, every bondage of the enemy is broken, and I am free. Father, thank you for your armor that you have provided for me. I put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. Clothed in your armor, O Lord, I am prepared to stand firm and resist the enemy's attacks. Lord, I am confident not in my strength but in yours. I draw my courage from you, knowing that you have overcome the world. Father, I rely on the power of prayer and fasting, not as a ritual but as a genuine expression of my dependence on you. Your word is my defense, O Lord. I stand on your promises, holding onto them in the face of all adversities. Father, I seek to live righteously. I know that I am not perfect, but you are perfect, O Lord. I seek to align my thoughts, words, and actions with your will. Strengthen me, Lord, so that I may live in a manner that is pleasing to you. Father, I put my trust in your grace and mercy. I lean on your understanding and not my own. Thank you for your promise of victory. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.